In this video, I'm going to quickly demonstrate how one can use charts in Silverlight and customize those charts. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a default chart control from Silverlight and I'm going to drag it onto the artboard. When you do that, Blend creates a chart that is pre-populated with some inline data. Inline means that that data is built into the chart itself. Now, while I don't recommend people use the XAML view as a practice, I'm going to show the XAML view just to show you what I mean by the data being in line. So here's the chart. This determines the kind of visualization. It's a column. And then we see in line it has a bunch of data. Now, that's not particularly useful for many of our applications. So instead, what I'm going to use is some sample data to generate my own chart. Let's just call this something like sales. And one property will be item name. Another property will be quantity. And another property will be price. And let's change a bunch of these data types. So item name, that looks just fine the way it is, except let's change it to be one word items. The price, let's change that to a, let's see, what do we have here? We have price. And for the quantity, let's change that to a number. And let's add one more. Let's call this supply. And we'll change that to a number as well. A two-digit number. And let's change quantity to a one-digit number. So the easiest way to get this chart to actually use the sample data is uh, the trick that I often use with sample data, which is to first just create the default list box from the sample data. The reason I do this is that sets up the data bindings within the XAML and uh, presets blend to use that sample data. And I'm going to delete that list box in a little bit because I don't actually need it. So I will go to this chart and I will click on the child of the chart, which is the column series. And you'll notice that the data context is already filled in with sales sample because it got that from the page itself implicitly. Now the dependent and independent, I'm going to change those fields. Instead of saying X and Y, I'm going to change them. Let's look back at our data. I'm going to change one to be supply and one to be quantity, or one to be item name. It doesn't really matter. It depends on what you're trying to do. And you'll see Okay, let's say that. Let's flip those around. Really just takes a little bit of playing to get the results you want. And the reason this data isn't showing up correctly, because I forgot one step, which is the item source. And this is for any uh, control that has children, we need to tell it where those children are coming from. And we are going to get it from the top level collection. There we go. So there's our data. That looks better. So we've got supply versus quantity. And we could change those around if we want to. We could say name, or we could flip those Now that doesn't quite fit in this kind of chart, but you get the general idea. And we can get rid of this list box at this point, and we can give our chart more space. And one of the tasks that many people ask, and this applies to the standard chart, is how do I get rid of that legend that says series one? Because it's not really relevant in this particular data set where I really only have one series. Well, there may be multiple ways to do this. I'm gonna show you the way I know how to do this which is what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the legend style for this object, for this chart, and I'm just going to remove the graphics for the series. So I go to the object menu, and I'll say edit style, edit additional styles, edit the legend, and I'll make a copy of it. 
let's call this a blank legend. And this will let me use this style on other objects as well. Now it's changed my scope. I'm inside of the chart itself. And let's, we are looking at the style, but now I want to go into the template. And I'm in the template. And it's, it's not really important how the legend is constructed. All I'm going to do is essentially remove all the graphical items that compose it. Now you'll still see there's this tiny little rectangle, which is actually a border. And I want to, I'm not going to remove that because if I remove it, it's going to use default content to fill that in. And I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to reset all of its properties to make sure it's essentially invisible. I could also just change its visibility to collapsed. That would work as well. That's probably even the fastest way. And then we come back out. So there's my chart that doesn't have a legend. If I look in my resources pane under the current context, I'll see that there is blank legend style. So if I go to that chart and I go to the chart itself and I reset the legend style, so there's a legend back on, and, it, and I decide, oh, you know, really, I really don't want that legend. Again, I can go apply edit the blank legend style and it'll go away. And this can apply to any number of charts. Now the next question that people often ask me is how do I change the chart, the chart style itself from a vertical to a horizontal or other kind of series. So to do that we are going to delete the column series child from the chart and let's go to our assets library and let's find a pie chart that's significantly different. We will drag the pie series onto our chart and it doesn't have anything showing up in it, so we have to fill in some of these fields again. So the items source, again, will come from collection. And we need to fill in the independent dependent. I don't really remember which goes on which side. There we go. And if we want our legend to reappear, a legend makes more sense for a pie chart. Let's zoom in. And I remove that legend by resetting the legend style when I had the chart itself selected. Thanks for your attention.